Welcome to my YouTube channel AeroVision Info. In today's video, we're diving deep into one of the most fascinating and talked about experimental aircraft of 2026 at the Aurora's A65 crane. Developed under a collaborative effort between DARPA and Aurora Flight Sciences, a Boeing subsidiary, the A65 crane isn't just another X-plane. It represents a major step forward in active flow control technology a field that could revolutionize how future aircraft are designed and controlled. The A65 stands for Control of Revolutionary Aircraft with Novel Effectors, and Crane isn't just a cool acronym it's a bold leap toward making mechanical control surfaces a thing of the past. Traditionally, aircraft rely on movable control surfaces like ailerons, elevators, and rudders to maneuver in flight. These surfaces move to deflect airflow, which in turn controls the direction of the aircraft. But the ZA-65 aims to remove these surfaces entirely and instead use active flow control a method of redirecting airflow over the wings and body of the aircraft using jets of air or actuators. In simple terms, instead of moving a flap to turn left or right, the ZA-65 manipulates the air itself using small, fast-moving jets or bursts of air from its surfaces. These flow control actuators allow the aircraft to maneuver in flight without changing its shape physically. The benefits? Reduced drag, lower maintenance, less mechanical complexity, and potentially much stealthier profiles. The ZA-65 is a full-scale unmanned test aircraft with a wingspan of around 30 feet and a weight of roughly 7,000 pounds. It's powered by a single jet engine, similar to a small business jet and designed with modularity in mind. The wing is interchangeable, which means different designs can be tested on the same platform. This makes it an ideal flying laboratory for aerodynamic innovation. In 2026, the ZA-65 completed its first fully controlled flight using only active flow control. This historic moment was significant and no ailerons, elevators, or rudders were used. It was a proof of concept for what engineers and aerospace theorists have imagined for decades, controlling an aircraft using only the manipulation of airflow. Aurora's engineers installed over a hundred active flow control devices across the ZA-65's wings and body. These devices a including synthetic jet actuators and microvalves a pulse air out at high frequencies and adjust pressure gradients across the aircraft surfaces, when coordinated precisely. They can produce the same control moments that traditional flaps and rudders do. The aircraft also features a simplified airframe thanks to the absence of moving parts. This leads to a smoother surface, potentially better stealth characteristics due to fewer radar reflective edges, and a significant reduction in wear and tear from mechanical motion. In long-term applications, this means lower operational costs and more reliable performance in high-demand environments. But the ZA-65 isn't just about proving the tech works say it's about laying the groundwork for future military and even civilian aircraft. If this active flow control technology matures, we could see fighter jets that are more maneuverable, lives with greater endurance and reliability, and commercial aircraft that are quieter, more fuel-efficient, and have fewer moving parts to fail. Aurora and DARPA aren't the only ones excited. The U.S. Air Force and Navy have both shown interest in adapting elements of the ZA-65's control system into their future drone and fighter designs. In fact, the implications for stealth aircraft are enormous. Without hinged surfaces, there's less chance for radar detection. For autonomous drones, fewer moving parts mean simpler maintenance and potentially longer mission durations. In the ZA-65 program, Test pilots and engineers operated the aircraft remotely from ground stations, testing how the jet responded to various inputs and wind conditions. What's more, advanced artificial intelligence systems were embedded in the flight software to help manage the timing and intensity of the flow control bursts in real time. This eye-driven control architecture is crucial because active flow control involves far more complex coordination than simple mechanical flaps. Let's not forget the environmental angle. By eliminating control surfaces, aircraft can be made lighter and more aerodynamically efficient. This translates to lower fuel consumption and emissions a something that the aerospace industry is under increasing pressure to address. 
The ZA-65 shows that it's possible to improve flight performance and environmental sustainability at the same time. 2026 has seen the ZA-65 fly multiple test missions with increasing levels of control refinement. Engineers have even started to introduce simulated damage scenarios A such as airflow disruptions and blocked jets A to test the redundancy and adaptability of the active control system. So far, the aircraft has handled these challenges impressively demonstrating its ability to maintain stable flight even with partial system failures. While it may be years before we see an airline Aurora fighter jet that uses active flow control exclusively, the Aurora's A-65 crane is undeniably a glimpse into the future. Its modular design, scalable technology, and promising test results mark it as one of the most important experimental aircraft of the decade. As of now, the crane program is moving into its final testing phase. DARPA plans to share the results with various aerospace partners and defense contractors to evaluate where this technology could be integrated next. The success of this project could influence the design of sixth-generation fighter jets, advanced stealth drones, or high-performance business jets. In conclusion, the Aurora's A-65 crane is not just an X-plane A, it's a vision of how aircraft might be built and controlled in the decades to come. By breaking free from traditional control surfaces and embracing the science of airflow manipulation, the A-65 has proven that aviation still has room for radical reinvention. Thank you for watching. If you found this video interesting, make sure to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss our upcoming deep dives into futuristic aerospace technologies. Leave a comment below if you think active flow control will become mainstream in the next 10 years, or if you have questions about the crane program. See you in the next video A only on AeroVision Info.